Now let's learn about the mapping with field access levels. Let's go back where our personal DB object, uh, where it has ID, first name and last name. By default, it is in the class level and package level, which is nothing but protected scope. So if I make them as public right now, in order to access them, we need to have status and getters. So if I make them are public and it will be used accordingly. So even in the map track, we'll consider the scope and call it accordingly. If the setters or getters are available, it would call them. If not, it will access them by access level. So directly it will try to access person.id, person.firstname, like that. And let's take the two object as well and change the scope. And let's go to the person DTO and change the scope. Let's go to the person DTO and change access level. So let's set it to the public. And here also public. Now let's go back to the mapper. In the mapper, nothing is mentioned. It's a simple object. So by default, it tries to take all these mappings which are having the, the person mapper. The person mapper has two person DTO method and no mappings has been defined. That means the default mapping, which means same data type and same field. In our case, all properties are the fields defined as public access level. So those would have been accessed directly. Let's go back to the mapper. You see it directly, it's been used that first name, last name like this. So for example, this is just for an example. Let's, we have an ID. So let's go to the DTO and create ID. Public log let's say person id so the person id needs to be mapped manually otherwise it will not be so you see it it doesn't have anything because the field name is different so let's create as it's a single i'm creating individually the mapping we have source which is id and the target is person id so let's save it if I go to the implementation class where I have the person access it has been set to ID. This is good, isn't it? Now, let's write a test case where I have the person test and let's create a person object. So, person DB object, DB object is equal to object and DB object of ID is equals to db object first name is equal to raw last name dasharala and date of birth new date of 1950 january 1st now let's say I create a DTO object. So DTO, so the DTO is equal to null, and let's create the sessions. Sessions not null, which is for the DTO, and a session equals DB object dot ID will be equals to DTO dot ID which is person id a session equals db object dot first name dto dot first name db object dot first name dto dot last name let's create the mapper using mapper start get mapper now let's create the DTO object using two person DTO of DB object. So now let's run the test case and see is it working as expected. Yes, it's working as expected. So we can use this scope level as well. But generally the DTO objects will not have the public scope. But if 
we have any, we can access them like this. Let's create another case where right now ID is being accessed directly. So let's change it. The person ID is not at the public spot. So for that one, we will be creating setter and getter. So I'm going to create only for the person ID. Now what happens? Save it and come back here. And if we see it, set person ID being used accordingly. So in our test case, we can modify this one. Let's get person ID. Save it and rerun the test case. It would be success. So as it's been demonstrated, we could use either public access level or setters and getters. Even with the combination also, it works well.